Hello everyone, my name is Alyssa White and welcome to the Dear Journal Podcast, a podcast where we talk about any and everything and freak out about life together. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and let's get straight into it. Alright guys, welcome back to another episode. So today I'm going to be talking about attachment styles because I don't think this is really ever talked about a lot but it really does affect your relationships with other people whether that's romantic or platonic and so if you don't know what attachment styles are i think there's pretty much like four main categories and so there's there's anxious attachment styles there's fearful and then there's avoidant and secure and i'll go through kind of each of these but the two main ones i think that people see the most is anxious and avoidant And it just really impacts how you interact with, like, your romantic partner or your friends. And I remember having a conversation with this with my friend because they were going through some stuff with their relationship. And we just started kind of going through, you know, how she was reacting to things. And then it made me think about me and my kind of attachment style. And it was just really interesting. We talked about it for, like, an hour. And that conversation just kind of stuck with me. So I wanted to talk about it today because I really don't think a lot of people are aware of what it is or have any idea of what theirs could be and how it's affecting their relationships. So basically, one of the first ones is anxious attachment style. And this basically means you're a little, you're not very secure in who you are. You find a lot of validation through others. And so a lot of times you need like, um words of affirmation like you need them to constantly kind of like reaffirm your relationship where it is the status of it and say if you got into an argument like you are going to need to talk it out right away you're going to need to know what that person is thinking after it and how they're dealing with it a lot of times it might come off as like are we still okay like yeah and then kind of the vice versa is that of that is the avoidant attachment style so these two tend to attract each other unfortunately which can create a very toxic dynamic but avoidant attachment styles basically if you were to get into an argument they would want some alone time right away like they would not want to deal with it right then and there they need to go have their own space think it through and then kind of be in their own energy and come back to the situation to where they can then hopefully kind of settle this but the problem with this is a lot of times they attract a anxious partner. So this partner needs to know, you know, like, where are we? Are you mad? All that kind of situation. And yet that person genuinely just can't kind of deal with it right off the bat like that. Like they need to take some space for themselves. And there's extremes to each of these, of course. Um, but I think that everybody has little tendencies of these, whether you realize it or not. I would like to consider myself none of them but or like secure attachment everybody would but unfortunately when you look at it you probably are one of these um and it's not a bad thing it's just more of like being aware of your patterns in relationships because it's definitely like once you look at it you'll start to see kind of you know do you need constant like reassurance by your friends by your partner are you always kind of consciously aware of what they're doing, thinking about them all the time? Of course, like, if you're in a relationship, of course, you're going to think about them all the time, but in a way of, like, not trusting them as well, because anxious attachment styles, you know, like, that's their person. They need a person a lot, and they're not as independent. They definitely take a lot of value from their interactions with others. And so when you look at it, these just kind of two really are the opposite of each other and but they attract each other. That's just kind of how it works. And I've seen it so many times as well with my friends in some of their relationships. But um, I think that as well, there's also the third one and the fourth, which is secure attachment. But the third one, fearful attachment is like you're scared of abandonment and it's somewhat similar to anxious attachment but in a way of just like yeah you're always scared somebody's gonna leave you you don't have that kind of trust it's more I would say in tune with like trust issues so that's obviously very valid I think a lot of people have 
trust issues with people especially and this one I think could probably form after say a bad relationship you have now just kind of like a fear of somebody else leaving you again maybe you got close to somebody really opened up to somebody and then you know they left or that relationship just ended really badly and now you're just kind of left with this like instinct that you know maybe you're not good enough you don't think that you had the same value that you did before and yeah you have you're kind of filled this fear of commitment too and of course the fourth one is secure attachment this means that you are very independent in your own self yet you both you and your partner can rely on each other to talk things out in a healthy way both of you are going to probably take the time you need maybe come back to it as well and not in like a avoiding way but just in a we need to take time to think through what's going on and then come back and figure something else out together and I think obviously everybody's striving for secure attachment right and I remember being in psych class as well this was in high school so only like a year ago but I remember this it was in my psych class that there was like an experiment with these kids that they put in a room basically with some toys and then the mom was there and then they asked the mom to leave the child in the room with nobody else there some toys and basically it was showing what happens with the kids like when the mom comes back or when they leave so when the mom leaves and if this child's like crying screaming like super upset then they definitely have like a fearful kind of attachment style it's not secure and and then also when the mom comes back if they're like kind of like hitting the mom they're mad at them for leaving them that kind of thing like it's not secure and they definitely resent them after that and it was only seen as a secure attachment style when the kid was able to like sit in the room just kind of do his own thing with the toys or hers and just you know be independent in that way and these were like toddlers too and then when the mom comes back they're just like oh the mom's back and they're they're not crying they're not upset they're just like more aware of her presence now but the kids that were like crying and throwing a tantrum were just like overly aware of the presence of their mom in the room too so it's like and the thing is all of these attachment styles also kind of center around your childhood and your relationship with your parents so It's really interesting when you start to look at like how that affects you and then how it affects you in future relationships and I know everybody talks about that you know like obviously your parents relationship will affect like um you when you grow up and your relationship with people in the future partner wise and yeah but I think it's really interesting when you look at just how different these kind of outcomes become because when you do have like a healthy parental kind of view like their relationship is good I do think that yeah of course it's gonna like set you up better to know what to expect and people always talk about um divorced parents and how that affects their kids and while that is completely valid and definitely will kind of mess you up a little bit probably um I think it's also interesting to talk about parents who maybe like are high school sweethearts or they met a lot younger and they've had kind of like a good relationship this whole time and how it can somewhat be an unrealistic standard for your kids because like then you expect to meet somebody that young or just kind of click with somebody right away and then if it doesn't happen when you're that young you're just kind of like okay well guess that's not for me but it's really interesting how those relationships with your parents will affect you and when it comes to all these attachment styles it's very evident that it definitely has quite an effect on you and you might not have even been aware of it all right so i'm going to talk about if you kind of know which one you are or you might think you now have an idea that basically when you are an anxious attachment style you attract the avoidant attachment style because oftentimes avoidant attachment styles have a way out of every relationship they are always have an exit strategy and they're never gonna get too involved they might get involved but they are always kind of ready to um duck out if they need to so 
that being said, they always attract anxious attachment styles because they're the only ones who are willing to put in that effort to continue to kind of push those boundaries of the avoidant. Because say that they're, you know, like, they say that they need more space often, they're feeling suffocated. It's because, you know, this anxious attachment style person is sensing, you know, their kind of distance and instead of kind of pulling back, you know, letting them the other person then lean on them they're just kind of pushing them and they're needing that reassurance constantly asking and so you know if you're always like I'm always meeting people who are way too needy like they always need too much then I probably have some bad news for you you are probably an avoidant attachment and unfortunately you are attracting those people because they're the only ones who will stick in it with you when you are trying to yeah, distance yourself from every hard conflict. And anxious attachment styles are, yeah, completely kind of insecure sometimes in their sense. They are scared of this person leaving them. And obviously fearful attachment is pretty much like a combination of both because they don't express their emotions as much, but they are definitely scared of abandonment. So they're kind of the combination of both. And when you kind of recognize your different patterns in dating, you're able to hopefully try to attract just a secure attachment style, right? And when you do that, you're able to be in your own energy, have your own confidence. You don't need all the validation from somebody else. And what's funny is even avoidant attachment styles, while they are a lot more independent and you know kind of like on their own kind of style they also want that constant kind of attention and pushing from anxious attachment styles whether they want to admit it or not or else they wouldn't keep attracting these kind of people and yet yeah if you kind of know that that's your dating history and everything then I kind of challenge you to maybe take a step back and look at why you've uh, kind of attracted the same kind of people because romantic or platonic I have learned that you really do attract the same kind of people and if you don't really deal with that in one person they will show up as another person in your life later on that's already happened to me like a few times and it's kind of crazy to me that you're like oh you know like that friend really wasn't the kind of person or personality that I get on with and yet if you kind of continue to have those patterns you will attract somebody like that in the future you really will and it'll take you a little bit to realize it's taken me some time to realize the kind of people sometimes that I attract and realize that they're not that different um and so you definitely will have patterns as far as friends or relationships and dating and being aware of those and then, you know, if and if you're not happy with the kind of people that you're attracting, taking the time to, yeah, maybe s- step back, look at why you keep letting these kind of people into your life when that's not what you want and you know it. So you have to look at yourself because it all obviously stems from yourself, right? I mean, I do think that it has a lot of impact from your parents, but I mean, at the same time, you're your own person, you form your own opinions. But the question is, you know, like, is this doable or is it just kind of um, subjected to what you were, to what you were like as a child with your parents? I don't think that it's all one way or another. I think that it's a combination, of course, um, because you're fully capable of creating your own patterns and relationships um but figuring out which one you are and then if it's not secure then figuring out how you can do that and of course there's levels to everything because in a relationship you're you know you're going to be worried about the other person whether you want to or not I mean no matter even if you're kind of secure it's just like that's just kind of how it is right I mean you'd hope the other person's being loyal and that kind of thing but um yeah, there's always going to be some of that just fear, and sometimes you're really just not going to want to deal with it either in an avoidance sense, you know. So, 
I mean, there's different levels to all of it, but if you continuously see that you're making kind of the same pattern, the same mistakes in these relationships, then yeah, take a look at what you're doing and, you know, maybe have a conversation with some of your friends and be like, you know, am I like this? Do you feel like I always need reassurance all the time? And then you can kind of get an insight to, yeah, how your relationships are. And basically, if you are an anxious attachment style, you have a lot lower self-esteem of yourself, but then you perceive everybody else to be that much better. If you're avoidant, then, you know, you have a very high opinion of yourself and low of others. And then secure attachment has a good opinion of yourself and others because you see the value in both. The problem stems from really just your amount of confidence in yourself and a lot of ways to counteract that would be to figure out something you enjoy something you're passionate about know what you like and you set your boundaries especially if you're anxious attachment style set your boundaries don't assume that somebody is just magically going to come into your life and solve all your problems and then you hold on to that and hold on to that idea and the idea of them when they probably like half the time aren't like that amazing it's probably like you idealizing them and then when you know who you are then people are just going to naturally kind of attract to you not being the the opposite like bad part of that like they will probably be a secure attachment style knowing that you are happy and confident and independent now so you there's definitely ways to fix these um especially once you recognize and are aware of what they are so If you had never heard of attachment styles before and had absolutely no idea which one you were or you still don't, there are quizzes online you can take. I don't know how accurate they are, but you can also just kind of reflect on yourself and you'll probably figure out which one you are. I don't think it's that hard. You might be a combination of both. A lot of people are, but yeah, I just felt like this was a topic that's not really talked about that often and can be very valuable in figuring out who and how you are dating or even your friendships um so yeah i hope you learned something today and if you don't know which one you are then maybe take a look at yourself and figure that out and you can start to kind of break those patterns so i hope you enjoyed today's episode and i'll see you guys next time Thank you so much for listening to the Dear Journal podcast, and I hope you enjoyed diving into today's topic. If you want to continue to get updates and stay notified, you can either turn on the notifications or follow me on Instagram at alyssa.white.22. That is all for today's episode, and I hope I see you next time.